Finally, first 10 years later video for the month of June. Once again, I am sorry I didn't get this out sooner. I wanted to, but I became busy with a lot of other projects throughout the month. But regardless, we're here now, so welcome back to 10 Years Later, the series where I talk about albums from the 2010s that were either impactful to me, impactful to music in general, very popular, or just worth revisiting 10 years later for good or bad reasons. And as you can tell from the title, the record that we'll be talking about today is the 2011 Bad Meets Evil EP, Hell the Sequel. Bad Meets Evil is the collaborative duo Duo of legendary Detroit rappers Royce the 5'9 and Eminem. These two first started as a duo back in the late 90s, but broke up in 2002 after Royce had a feud with Eminem's rap group D12. Royce and Eminem ended their feud in 2006, however, when M's best friend and fellow D12 member Proof was killed. After the duo reconciled, Royce's rap group Slaughterhouse was signed to Eminem's label Shady Records, and shortly after, Royce and M put this record out. Slaughterhouse themselves would even pop up on a track on this record, Loud Noises. Now, while I wouldn't call myself the biggest, most hardcore fan of his, I've enjoyed Eminem probably a lot more than most others do these days. And while I didn't listen to this record a lot in my youth, I did have quite an attachment to Lighters. And with how great Em and Royce can be, I was hoping that would shine through on this project. It's 11 tracks in 46 minutes, which makes me wonder why it's classified as an EP, even with its original release. But classifications aside, I was surprised that this turned out to still be quite good. I had a few bad feelings that it would come across sounding very dated and yes, some of the writing can be very dated, but all in all, the project still works. And I think one of the big reasons why is thanks in large part to the artists that top line it. It's pretty obvious, but Eminem and Royce have known each other for a very long time, and they naturally bring out the best in each other with regards to their flows and performances. Both of them sound very hungry as if they walked into the booth and just wanted to have a contest of who could go harder and spit the better bars. The crazy thing though is that no matter who spits the better bars, neither one really upstages the other. It's really a showcase of two fantastic MCs he's going off and showcasing great technicality without getting too over the top on the speed. Many of the high points on here, like Welcome to Hell and Fastlane, are really heavily lifted by Em and Royce's performances. The production, while not bad, is a bit nondescript, almost feeling like continuations of the sounds Eminem brought on Recovery, but these guys ride the beats so excellently that it helps elevate production that may come across somewhat forgettable. Also, shout out to Sly Jordan on the chorus of Fastlane, it's hella catchy. I think I'll also always have a bit of a soft spot for lighters, because while while a lot of people don't like that song, I've continued to really enjoy it. Beyond Bruno Mars' super sticky chorus, Eminem's verse stands out on a personal level because it was one of the first verses I ever learned how to rap. It was this and a few of the singles off of Recovery that I actually wanted to learn how to rap myself, and they were some of the first songs that made me go, hey, rap is cool. Again, there are a lot of bars on the song that do get clowned a bit from both Em and Royce, but I think their technicality is so strong and that personal connection will keep the song in my favor. As I mentioned though, many of the tracks on here are lifted by what Em and Royce do on them, and that can be a bit of a pratfall for several cuts here. Because a lot of the appeal is Em and Royce's technical abilities and rap flows, the instrumentals can tend to play second fiddle to the performers, and a lot of the hooks can feel pretty thrown together and forgettable. There's also a pretty solid consecutive stretch where that happens, with four straight tracks that end up losing something because their choruses make them fall down a peg. It's a shame that happens on a track like The Reunion, for example, because while the lyrical content fits in a lot of the controversial Eminem talk, it's still a showcase of his character and career. Charisma. Same goes with Royce. But that gets dragged down because the chorus is a bit laughable. Above the Law tries to bring in Claret Jai for its hook, which sadly does it no favors and makes me just wish the song was treated like a freestyle. The Mike Epps sample on I'm On Everything I know is supposed to be funny, but it just does nothing for me. It doesn't add much character to the song, it just kind of ends up being something I want to skip over. And the hook on A Kiss is so bland and structureless, it's one of those things that's sadly memorable for all the wrong reasons. These tracks aside, the record takes a turn for the better around lighters. The last few cuts feel a lot more focused and are much better as a result. Take From Me sees Claret Jai come back to deliver the hook, but it works a lot better here because her vocals feel a lot more emotional and they fit the atmosphere of the track. There are some really interesting bars in the track too, specifically in Royce's verse where he talks about piracy and leaks and how these things don't actually have positive effects on musicians. M himself also reflects on fame and how he reacts to it and it makes for a strong late record track. And the close to the standard edition of the EP, Loud Noises is easily one of the best things the record comes through with. This is a posse cut featuring the entire Slaughterhouse group just spitting bars without any real stop. The beat is very bouncy and pretty much everyone does a damn good job with their verses. I particularly love the rhyme schemes on King Crooked's 
verse, and I was also fascinated by Joe Budden's verse. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but these days I associate Joe Budden so much with podcasts that I forget about his actual rapping. And hearing him spit fast flows on this track was actually really surprising, but I liked it. There are a few bonus tracks on this thing, and they actually really work. Living Proof has a title that's obviously a reference to Proof, and the song serves as both a tribute to him and a general confidence boost for M and Royce. This is one of those tracks that works in pretty much every way. Beyond the performances, I think the mostly bass-driven instrumental fits these guys well. And Royce's chorus is by far one of the catchiest ones on the EP. It's energetic, it's confident, it feels like something these two were building towards for a long time. Echo, the closer to the record, features a hook from Liz Rodriguez, who would go on to sing the chorus to Survival from the Marshall Mathers LP 2 a few years later. The chorus took a bit to grow on me, but I think Liz's vocal energy combined with the slightly more rock-leaning instrumental ends up making for quite a banger. Em and Royce get a bit emotional in their bars as well, and it makes for what is pretty much the best song the duo could have closed with. Overall, Hell the Sequel is a worthy showcase for two legendary Detroit MCs. As it is, I can say this project is lifted pretty heavily by those performances. Royce and Eminem are in excellent form all throughout this record with amazing flows and strong performances. And even if some of the lyrical content is pretty aged, I think these guys do a great job of bringing the best out of each other and really selling the narrative as well. It's definitely a flawed EP and a lot of people have made those flaws rather clear in the 10 years that it's been out. The production is not the greatest and many of the hooks fall flat. Again, I genuinely say that this EP would not be what it is without the two artists that headline it. They heavily lift the project even in the points where the support structure doesn't exactly hold them up. In many cases, that lack of support structure in production might sink a record because the production is the backbone of the music, but this actually mostly manages to avoid that. It just so happens that Eminem and Royce are just good enough to make that happen and they have even better chemistry than you'd expect. I do think the flaws that I mentioned stop it just short of excellence, but while it lasts, it's plenty enjoyable. And if you're a fan of either of these artists, or of course both of them, this EP is as close to essential listening as you could get. Back in 2011, I honestly feel like I would have liked this thing. I was starting to enjoy Eminem a lot at the time, so I think this is something I would have gotten behind. Listening to it now, I don't love it as much as I probably would have back then, but it's still a damn fine record. If I had to put it on my scale, it would probably get a good rating from me. It's certainly not the best thing ever, and it's got quite a few flaws, but it's still plenty enjoyable, and there are quite a few great high points on it. But that's just my opinion on the record. What did you guys think about it? Did you listen to it back in 2011? Do you still listen to it now? Did you love it back then? Hate it back then? Love it now? Hate it now? Are you just completely indifferent towards it? Whatever your thoughts and opinions are, leave them down in the comments below. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe and support some of my other ventures that I have linked in the description, thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. And moving right along, the next record that I'm going to be talking about in 10 years later is Boney Vare's album, Boney Vare, Boney Vare. I've heard a lot of great things about that album, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out myself. So stay tuned for that, but until next time, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.